my Jesus built Now the curse of sin has no hold on me When the sun sets free, oh it's free indeed Now my debt is paid, it is paid in full By the precious blood that my Jesus spilled Now the curse of sin has no Brothers and sisters in Christ, let me greet everyone a blessed and happy Resurrection Day. Today we again recall how Jesus rose from the dead, and which is a, a historic, uh, historical event. And we want to thank God because if not for Jesus rising from the dead, today we will also have no hope and there will be no salvation for any one of us. So we want to praise God and thank God that Jesus is alive. Jesus rose from the dead and he today is with us and he will be forever be with us. Let's come to the Lord in prayer. Father, we praise you, we thank you. Lord Jesus, we praise you because you rose from the dead to prove yourself that you are God to prove yourself, Lord, that you have overcome death, you have overcome sin, and you have accomplished our salvation. So, Lord, we praise you, we thank you, and may you continue, Lord, to open our minds and our hearts today to what you have done for us, and also, Lord, to how you're going to use us for your own glory, so that people may know that we are worshiping a true and living God. May our lives also show that you are indeed the living God. So Lord, we praise you. We commit the rest of the time into your hands. We pray that you use your own words to continue, Lord, to encourage us, to strengthen our faith in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today we're going to specially uh, thank God of again remembering, recalling the, resur the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our topic for this morning 
is entitled, Believe in Your Heart and Declare with Your Mouth. Our passage is still in the book of Romans. Though we skip a bit, we go straight to Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. These verses are, my, are one of those favorite verses of mine that I love to use, especially during evangelism, and especially introducing Jesus Christ or explaining to people how we should uh, become a child of God and how we should be saved. So these two verses are one of those very key verses of the book of Romans. Let me read Romans 10, 9, and 10. If you have Bibles with you, please open to this passage. Romans, Epistle of Romans, chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Verse 10, for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. Let me read this again. Romans 10, verses 9 and 10. If you, con if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. It is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. Lord, we pray that you will use your own words to bring us into focus with your son, Jesus Christ, especially knowing that he has risen from the dead. We are worshiping a living God, the almighty God. So Lord, today as we continue to remember how 2,000 years ago you rose from the dead, we thank you, we praise you, and you are indeed the eternal, all-powerful God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This passage, as I just mentioned, that these are one of those key passages in the book of Romans. And here you will see Paul specially mentioning the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Believing in our hearts and declaring with our mouth that, Je that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead is the key to our salvation, is the key of our justification. Without the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Christianity would fall. Christianity rests on the certainty of Jesus' resurrection as a space time occurrence in history. This is J.I. Packer in one of his book. It is the foundation doctrine of the New Testament, which is mentioned over a hundred times. Christianity is the only religion with a living organizer or originator, I mean. The boast and glory of Christianity is the empty tomb. In other words, Jesus is risen. So this is the key, the center of our Christianity, of our salvation, that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Now, if the resurrection is true, then Jesus indeed is the Son of God. And this is the miracle on which all other miracles stand or fall. If this, the greatest of all miracles, is true, then it is easy for us to believe all the rest. This is why Paul specifically mentioned, believe in your heart that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. The resurrection is a vital part of our salvation and justification for several reasons then. These are the reasons why the resurrection plays a very vital part in our salvation. First, the resurrection proves the existence of God. If, it is, if there is no God, 
Jesus Christ would not be raised from the dead. It is by the power of God that Christ rise from the dead. Now, he did not, uh, he did because a living God resurrected him from the dead. God himself is living. And so he could give life. He could also cause Jesus Christ to rise from the dead. And that is the first uh, reason or, uh, for, our, for the importance of the uh, resurrection. It proves the existence of God. Second reason, the resurrection proves the deity of Jesus Christ. If Romans 1.4 says here, And who through the spirit of holiness was appointed the son of God in power by his resurrection from the dead. Jesus Christ our Lord. The resurrection proves to us that Jesus indeed is God. Jesus said he is going to be he is going to die but on the third day he will rise from the dead and he did so and this makes Jesus Christ he himself as God he not only dies which may which is not strange to many other religions only Christianity has a living originator or or founder Jesus Christ because he rose from the dead and today he is alive and because Jesus is alive then all things are possible for him nothing is too difficult for him and he can even do even more than what we can think or imagine because Jesus Christ is God himself thirdly Resurrection also means that salvation is an accomplished fact. He died, that's it. But if he remained dead until now, then our salvation is still at stake. Because that would mean that he has not, Jesus has not overcome death, which is the wages of sin. Jesus Christ said that salvation was complete when he died on the cross. In John chapter 19, verse 30, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. What does Jesus mean when he said, It is finished? Is it because he has no hope of coming down from the cross? Or is it because he is really going to die already and that's the end? It's finished for him. No. What Jesus meant was he has done what the Father has entrusted to him to do, the will of the Father, and that is to provide the way of salvation. So Jesus at the cross says it is finished because he knows that then he will die. But after that is the resurrection of the dead. The resurrection confirms that our salvation indeed is finished. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, we are blessed, thankful, grateful, grateful for what the Lord has done of rising from the dead for us. And it is because of this power that we stand that our Christianity our faith in the Lord continues to stand because of the power of resurrection. And next, our salvation, or resurrection, I mean, prepares Jesus Christ also to fulfill the next promises that he has, or the next promise that he has, which is, I will come again. John 14.3 so because Jesus is, uh, John 14, 3, mentions that I will come again and take you to be with me. So when on the night where Jesus was uh, arrested, chapter 14, when he was with his disciples, after washing their feet, Jesus told them, do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. 
believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many dwelling places. And if it were not so, I would have told you. I will go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to be with me. That's the promise of the Lord, that he is coming again to take us with him. Now, if he did not rise from the dead, he cannot fulfill that promise. But because he did rose from the dead, and he is alive, so he can keep his promise because he is a living God. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. This is what he said in Matthew 24, 35. What he said will never pass away. So when he said, I will come again, that would mean that he is going to fulfill that promise. That he's going to take us with him. Today, people are asking, is this the time that Jesus is coming again because of our situation about the pandemic? To be honest, really no one knows. But these are just the signs that Jesus indeed is very near. His coming again is just very near. We are just at the verge of the fulfillment of that promise. So in other words, brothers and sisters, let's not ask for when, what time, but let's ask ourselves, are we prepared to meet the Lord? And that's the more important question we need to ask ourselves. Because he is alive, he can keep the promises that he has made, especially the promise of coming back again to take us with him. Lastly, the power of his resurrection is an experience that we can enjoy today. Every year we celebrate the resurrection day. And to us, church, we always put it on a Sunday, the resurrection Sunday. What does that mean to you year after year? Is it really something special to us? To us Christians, especially to us who have experienced Jesus Christ already in our lives, does the resurrection rings a bell in our heart, in our in our ears? Does it signal something in our hearts of how we should live our life? The power of the resurrection is an experience that today we can also enjoy. Paul says this. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participate in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. Paul himself experienced his power of the resurrection in himself. And in fact, he wants to know more of the Lord Jesus Christ and to experience the power of of his resurrection and even to participate in the sufferings of Christ and becoming like him in his death. In other words, Paul was even willing to be crucified like Jesus Christ. How about us today, Christians? Are we willing even to face sufferings, difficulties in life? For the sake of the Lord. Paul was trying to tell us here that he experienced the power of Christ's resurrection even in suffering, even in hardship, and know him even more deeper. I don't know what suffering, what difficulties means to us, but for sure. God has something for you to learn in every suffering, in every uh, trouble that we meet in this world. He has a purpose so that we may know him even more. When you look back to the experiences of the disciples, when the disciples were following Jesus Christ, it was not always everything well. 
I would say. Well, Jesus, I believe, it, as John had mentioned, that if uh, all the miracles of all what Jesus did were recorded in ink and paper, the whole world will not contain the books that is written for it. What Paul, what uh, John was just trying to say is that there's just still so many things that Jesus did that are not recorded in the scripture that we have today. So in other words, Jesus, with his disciples in these three years with them, Jesus did even more, more than what is recorded. And I believe that these disciples know that. But one of those uh, events, or a few of those events, or the events that happened to these disciples that made them really know who Jesus is, were not so much of the good, uh, let's say, good times. But it was when they met a storm. When they met difficulties. When they met struggles. When they say, no, we have not caught anything. We have not caught in, not even a single fish. So they were in trouble. They have no income for that day. But what did Jesus do? Jesus caused the fish to go into their nets. To the point that their nets almost broke. To the point that their two boats that they filled with this fish almost sank. And when they saw this, they realized that Jesus was not just a human being. He was God himself. So it was in these difficult times, trying times, that the disciples even know Jesus Christ more. When they met the storm, and Jesus was with them, and these disciples, they were experienced veteran fishermen. And I believe that uh, waves, normal waves, are nothing to these fishermen. But during that time, it was indeed really a storm. The waves were really big. And water are already coming in the boat. So to the point that this fisherman already went and uh, woke Jesus up and told Jesus, Teacher, don't you mind if we drown? Oh, that's a, uh, the voice of a terrified fisherman already and desperate person. What are we going to do now? Are you not concerned if we sink? <laughs> and Jesus woke up, stood up, and said, You of little faith, why are you afraid? And Jesus spoke to the winds and the waves. The winds and the waves obey him. And what did the disciples say? Who is this man that even the winds and the waves obey him? It was then that re they realized even more. Know Jesus even more. That Jesus was God himself. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, all of us encounter difficulties in life. All of us go through troubles, testings in life. How do we face it? Do we look at it as an opportunity? Or do we look at it as a very discouraging situation to discourage us in continuing our trust and our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Every situation we go through, God has a purpose. His purpose are always for our good. And it is a privilege, it is an opportunity for us to know who he really is. In fact, it is even true, even in difficult times. It is in this difficult time we are that God would even show himself more 
than any other times of our life. So Paul here said that I want to know Jesus Christ, to know the power of his resurrection, and to participate in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. If it, Paul was trying to say that if it would take sufferings for me to know Christ more and even to experience the power of his resurrection, let it be. And if it is even to die like Jesus Christ, that would make me know him more and experience the power of his, of his resurrection, Paul says, then let it be. And Paul indeed experienced that. And this is actually a, an eye-opener to each one of us Christians. Maybe in our Christian life, we have been very complacent, relaxed, and sometimes God had to wake us up. And I did experience this in my own life. Christians, you are called to something very, very important. To proclaim the name of the Lord Jesus Christ through your own life. Whether it be your words, or it will be, whether it will be your deeds, or whether it will be your experience. That when people look at you, they will see Christ in your life. And that is what Paul is also trying to say in Philippines. That even though it should take suffering, I'm willing just to know Jesus Christ. And experience the power of his resurrection. Praise the Lord. This also means that living in newness of life that comes to us by the resurrected Christ, living his life anew through our bodies. This will just also tell us that the power of the resurrection is the cause of the transformation of our body, of our, of our lives. That Christ working in us and through us, would, we will be instruments of Christ in telling the world of who he is. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, may we always put that in mind. That we are here with a purpose. We're not just here to, you know, to, uh, to accommodate a place. Or we're not just here to spend time. We're here with a purpose. And God's purpose for each one of us is that through us, the Lord Jesus Christ may be made known to everyone. And may this also be our goal. Let me read our passage again. If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. Salvation hangs on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Without it, no one will be saved. It is by the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ that we are transformed into a new person or a new creation and have the assurance of eternal life. It, was, it is by the power of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Jesus is risen. We give all the glory, praise, and honor our only Savior and only God, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We praise you. We give all the glory and honor to you. You are God. You have overcome death. You have overcome our sin through the power of your resurrection. We thank you, Lord. We can boast that we worship a living, all-powerful, Almighty God, we give back all our praise and glory to you and may our lives be transformed by the power of your resurrection. And may this power continue to dwell in us so that, Lord, we may be your witnesses wherever we are. 
we will be salt and light of this world. We thank you, Lord, for dying at the cross and rising again from the dead for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let's now come to the Lord's table and let's all prepare ourselves. If you have anything that may hinder you from partaking of the bread and the wine, this time we may come before the Lord and confess whatever sins we may have, whatever the Holy Spirit may convict us of, this is the time that we come to the Lord humbly and confess our sins and ask God through the, Lord, through the Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us and cleanse us from all our sins. Let's do that for a few, a few minutes. Lord Jesus, we come to your table this morning. Especially, Lord, remembering what you have done for us, how you have suffered for us. You have broken your body for our sins. You died at the cross. You shed your blood for the cleansing of our sins. Lord Jesus, we thank you because today we can again recall, remember, that you not only died for us, but you also ro raised, rose from the dead for us. We praise you, Lord. We thank you because you are the living, eternal God. And today, we can experience this power of the resurrection through our lives every day as you continue, Lord, to transform us to be more and more like you. Lord, we pray that you bless the bread and the cup, that as we partake, we would remember your love for us and be a witness for you all the days of our life. In Jesus' name, amen. The night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. After giving thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take in remembrance of me. Brothers and sisters, with humble, teachable hearts, remembering how the Lord broke his body for us. Let's now partake together. After supper, Jesus took the cup and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Every time you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Again, you will partake of the cup to remember God's love for us of sending his, Je his son Jesus Christ and shed his blood at the cross for the cleansing of our sin. We will now remember our Lord Jesus Christ and one day he is coming again to take us to be with him forever. Let's all partake together. Lord Jesus, we thank you of this opportunity to remember you of what you did for us at the cross, dying for us, and you rose from the dead for us. We praise you, we thank you, because you are the living, eternal God. Today, we can experience your power to live a life more and more like you. Give us, Lord, the courage to face every situation in our life. 
And make us always remember that we don't need to fear because you are the living God. You have, re you have res resurrected from the dead. And there's just nothing too difficult for you. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay.